In this video, you're going to learn how to do polynomial long division, and I'm going to talk about how to work through these step by step. We're going to go through three examples together, so as you get the hang of it, you can try some of these on your own. So for the first example, we've got x squared minus 3x plus 5 all divided by the quantity x minus 2. So the way you want to set this up is what you're dividing by, that's going to go in front here, and what it's dividing into, or the numerator, that's going to go underneath this division bar. So we've got x squared minus 3x plus 5. <clears throat> okay, so now what you want to do is you want to say to yourself, and you can do this a few different ways, so find the way that you like best. You could say, how many times does this first term go into this first term? Now that might sound a little confusing. What, what do I mean, how many times does it go in? Well, you could say, well, what's x squared divided by x? x squared divided by x is just going to be x. So what I do is I like to put the x kind of lined up with these other x's just to keep everything kind of organized and lined up. Then what you can do is you can distribute to both of these terms. So you can see x times x is x squared, x times negative 2 is negative 2x, and then what we do is we subtract. Now subtraction is the same thing as adding the opposite. So what I oftentimes like to do is just change these signs to the opposite and add. A lot of times students find that a little bit easier than subtracting, especially when you have a lot of negatives involved. Notice this first terms, they cancel one another out. x squared minus x squared is zero, and that's what you want. You always want those first terms to cancel. If they don't, you know that you've, you've got the wrong value here. So now you can see we have negative x plus five. Now we say, how many times does x go into negative x? Or what I personally like to do is I say to myself, Mario, what? times x is equal to negative x. Well, I know negative 1 times x is equal to negative x, and the reason that I want these to match is so when I subtract, that first term cancels out, right? But we want to distribute the negative 1 to both of these terms. So negative 1 times x is negative x, negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. We subtract, or you can change the signs to the opposite and add. Notice that first term cancels out, just like it did over here, and 5 plus negative 2 is 3. Now this is a zeroth degree, it's a constant, right? And the constant or zeroth degree is lower than this x to the first, this is a first degree. When this is lower than this, this is our remainder, and we take our remainder and we put it over our divisor. So for example, if I said how many times does six go into 19, you'd say it goes in there three times, three times six is 18, with one left over, one is smaller than six, so we would put that one, that remainder, over the six. You remember that from earlier on. So it's the same thing here with polynomial long division. Let's look at number two, a little bit more challenging example. How would we do this one? Well, we have the quantity in the numerator is being divided by this quantity in the denominator. We're trying to see how many times does x squared plus one go into that. Now, notice there's some missing terms here. We don't have an x so we could put a placeholder like 0x. We also don't have an x here, so we could put a placeholder 0x. And the reason I put those placeholders in there is because it helps everything line up a little bit easier. Uh, what I mean by that is when you're doing this, you'll see how everything just kind of you know, lines up and it's just easier to solve. So let's set this up. Okay, so now what we do is we say, how many times does x squared go into 2x cubed? You could do the work off to the side, like if you wanted to come over here and say, hmm, 2x cubed divided by x squared. Uh, let's see, 2 divided by 1 is 2, and when I divide, I subtract the exponents, I get x. So this would be like 2x. Or you could do what I like to do, which is I say, what times x squared equals 2x cubed? And that's, again, just going to be 2x. So I'm going to put this right above the x's. You don't have to do that. A lot of times students will just put it right here at the beginning. I just like to keep everything lined up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the 2x to all three of these terms. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. 2x times 0x is going to give us 0x squared. 2x times 1 gives us 2x. And now see everything lines up nicely. We can subtract, which is like adding the opposite. Right? So I'm just changing those signs to the opposite. Now we add straight down, these first terms cancel. Negative 2x squared minus 0x squared is a negative 2x squared. 0x minus 2x is a negative 2x. And I'm just going to bring the 7 down just to see what we have left here to work with. Again, we say how many times does this first term go into this first term? So again, we could do the work over here to the side. We could say negative 2x squared divided by x squared. 
that's going to come out to negative 2, right? Because x squareds cancel. Or you can do my personal technique, which is just to say what times x squared equals negative 2x squared. That's going to be negative 2. And we're going to distribute to all three of these terms. So negative 2x squared, uh, 0x, and negative 2. And then we can subtract or change the signs to the opposite and add. Notice those first terms cancel just like they did here. Negative 2x minus 0x is negative 2x. 7 plus 2 is 9. Notice that this is x to the first, whereas this is x squared. So when this degree is lower than this degree, that's our remainder. We put our remainder over our divisor. So let's write our final answer here. We've got 2x minus 2, okay, plus our remainder, negative 2x plus 9, over our divisor, which is x squared plus 1. And that's our final uh, quotient there. So let's do one more example. Let's see if you can do this one on your own and we'll go through it together. Okay, while you're working through this problem, I wanted to ask you, have you gotten my video courses yet? My Algebra 1, my Algebra 2 slash College Algebra video courses. I've got links in the description. If you like the way I explain things and you want to learn more and go deeper into those uh, two classes, check out those courses. Those will really help you to understand. And we do go through a lot of uh, concepts and uh, practice examples together. So if I was going to do this one, what I would do is I would set it up like we've been doing. I'd take the denominator and I'd see how many times it goes into this numerator. But notice how there's some missing terms here. We're missing an x squared term. We're also missing an x term. And so I like to put it in a descending order here from highest to lowest. Any missing term is put as zero. Again, we always take this first term and this first term and we say, how many times does x go into x cubed? That's x squared times. Uh, and so you can check your work because when you multiply x squared times x is x cubed, see how those match. And then x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. Okay, now we're going to subtract. But subtraction is the same as adding the opposite. Adding a little bit easier, I think, and a lot of students do as well, especially when you have a lot of negatives in there. And then now you say, hmm, again, these first terms, x goes into 2x squared how many times? 2x. Or you can say what times x is equal to 2x squared, that's going to be 2x, and we distribute. So 2x squared minus 4x. Now we're going to subtract or change the signs and add. Notice those first terms cancel. And we're left with 4x minus 8. What times x is equal to 4x? That's going to be 4. Okay. And 4 times x is 4x, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. When we subtract, it's the same as changing the signs to the opposite and adding. And notice on this one we have a zero remainder. So this one worked, uh, went in evenly, and we're just left with uh, x squared plus 2x plus 4 as our quotient. So great job if you're able to follow uh, this example. If you want more practice, I'll put a link to another polynomial long division video I did right there. So you can test yourself. You want to get a lot of practice with math problems, test yourself, and go ahead and check it with that video. So I'll see you over in that video.